wins. <laughs> Family and food and the birth of Christ. Snow! Probably my first Christmas with Judy, and Judy was the present. She was the gift. <laughs> when I was in eighth grade, I think I got a karaoke machine, and I would not stop singing on it <laughs> for like that entire year. And then everyone else in my family got really mad, and then one day it broke, and it was sad. But everyone else was happy. <laughs> I think of one when I was really, I, it must have been very young because I didn't have any front teeth. <laughs> and uh, I got this little tiny package and opened it up and it had fake front teeth. <laughs> and I thought it was the coolest gift. <laughs> I had a grandfather that thought it was gifted. So he bought me a, a radio kit to put together. I was probably nine years old. And I put together this uh, right on Christmas Eve. I put it together as soon as I got it and uh, put it together and had it working the next day. And I was quite proud of myself and he was real proud of me, of course. And that was a big thing then. And uh, I always thought maybe that's why I went into electronics. That's why I ended up in the industry because it, uh, I felt so special because someone believed that I was going to be special. That's cool. How many of you like presents? <laughs> How many of you like giving your presents away to someone else? My parents were the warmest, most open door people in the world and uh, the bigger the family gathering the more they liked it. Christmases growing up in Chicago were wonderful. It was always freezing cold usually with ice and snow. My home was always warm. We always had everything we needed. We were in the depression but I didn't even know it. My grandfather would have a bible up reading the Christmas story and uh, everybody would be in rapt attention as he told it, you know, as he, as he could tell it, you know, how grandfathers are. Since I would wake up super early and Matthew wouldn't, and my mom wakes up early, me and my mom, we will, every Christmas morning, we um, watch a Christmas movie while my brother's sleeping. <laughs> I do remember <clears throat> going to school and we had, always had a Christmas party at school. In that era, I uh, walked from our house and thought nothing of walking through the snow. They never closed for blizzards or anything, so it was fun. Then there was the time that when I had three daughters, I put together a little kitchen set for them. I had to put it together, and it was 102 steps. I started when they went to bed, and when I had just finished putting the thing together, when they came pitter-pattering down the hall, all anxious to see what they got for Christmas. In those years, lights, electric lights did not exist. So we had real candles on the Christmas tree and uh, just the smell alone made Christmas wonderful. I have a story that I just uh, love to read with my kids. It's, a, it's an author that I've really appreciated through the years. His name is Arthur Gordon. The story is The Good Things of Life, and it talks about priorities in life, humility, and distractions that can come. And I, he's an excellent writer, and every year I, no matter even when my kids came home from college, we always sit down and we always read this story together. Oh, what about our first Christmas together in 1967? Remember the tree we had? It was white. We had what? You're gonna put me on the spot. Here. <laughs> There's a picture of you and I decorating it. Oh yeah, we were, weren't we? Yes. We were. We were thinking. We knew what we were doing. 
You've come a long way. Well, I tell you, I remember that tree. <laughs> candlelight service for Christmas one year about 30 years ago in this church and that night for some reason my dad was visiting and he came to the church with me and in and in that service at the end of that service we had the feet washing ceremony and I asked my dad to do it and he did it so I got to wash feet with my father my son-in-law at after Thanksgiving became sick and they thought he had the flu and he didn't he had something else and he got sicker and sicker and by the 10 days before Christmas he was dying because he had MRSA and the staph infection invaded his heart and it was so bad they airlifted him from Walla Walla to Spokane to a teaching hospital that had a wonderful heart team and I flew up on the last plane into Spokane, got the last seat on the plane, and was there on Christmas Eve, the night before Christmas Eve, and they were saying to my family and my daughter, there's nothing we can do. We can't operate, and we have to operate. We can't operate because he's too sick to operate, his heart is not working, and if we don't operate, he will die. So we have to make a choice. And the night before Christmas Eve, we said, operate. And then we prayed. And when the doctors got in there, they knew they had told us that his heart was completely covered with the staph infection, and they would have to replace the valves, so they had everything ready to go. But when they got in there, into his heart, they said, oh, I think we can clean this up. And they washed his heart and they scrubbed his heart and they did not replace the valve and he recovered. That was a Christmas gift from God. Jackie and I and our daughter Michelle spent three months in Germany and we went to the wedding of Angie Miklas, some of you may know her, who got married in Austria. After the wedding, we went to visit friends in Munich, and they suggested we go to a town in Salzburg, Austria, where the song Silent Night was uh, produced. So we left our daughter with our friends, and Jackie and I went to Oberndorf in Salzburg, and it was a little town in a small valley and it was getting dark and all of a sudden, sudden you heard trumpets on the hillside. The sound kind of reverberated throughout the area because of the mountains and they played Silent Night. And then we could hear people singing Silent Night, and they all sang in English. <laughs> so the people around us, which was packed, were mostly English-speaking visitors, but it was very uh, emotional to be there at that time. I would like to wish the whole Ocean Tech Church a very Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Oceanside. Merry Christmas, Oceanside. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Oceanside. Merry Christmas, Oceanside. Merry Christmas, Oceanside. Merry Christmas to the Oceanside Church. Merry Christmas, Oceanside. You're a wonderful church family. <laughs>